Hi, and welcome back to another c -sharp beginner tutorial for the Stride game engine. In this tutorial, we learn about loading content from code. So normally, we build our scenes directly in the scene editor, and then we load those scenes, and then all models and particles and lighting, everything is loaded when that scene is loaded. However, in a lot of situations, you want to load acids or content, as I should say, directly from code because you only need them at a certain moment. Think about a spawn soldier, for instance. So this mannequin model that I have loaded in here in this loading content tutorial for the c -sharp beginner template project, well, I'm just going to delete that. Instead, we're going to be loading that through this loading assets demo entity to which I have attached the loading content demo script. Now for this script, we know that we want to load a model. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a private variable called private model. And let's just call that the loaded model. Now we could load our model directly in the start method, but we want to spruce it up just a little bit for the sake of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little if statement that if my input is key pressed and if the key L is being pressed then I want to load the content or I want to load that model into my script into into memory loaded model is and then we can address the content class followed by the load method and we then have two options of using this load method let's first try the first one between the parentheses, the first argument that we need to specify is the type of content that we're going to load. So we need to say type of, we want to load the type of model. And then we have to specify the URL of our model. So how do we know that URL? How, we, how can we get that? So let's go back to Stride real quick. And as you can see, I've I have all these folders here in my solution explorer and in this case I have this extra solution loaded here as well with a models folder and that's where the mannequin model resides. And if we hover over that thumbnail you can see the URL is models slash mannequin model. If this is a really long path you can imagine that you don't want to be typing over this path manually. So you can right mouse click and then just click copy asset URL. We can then go back to Visual Studio and then between some double quotes, we can pass in that URL. Now we're almost done. Since we are loading content this way with all the attributes or the arguments between the parentheses, we have to specify what kind of content we're loading by casting it to the type model. So this is one way of doing it. We're loading that content of the mannequin model, we're loading that into memory, into our script. Now a second way of using the load method is by not using this content load and type of, but instead use the generic approach. So we can use model here, we can ignore this first argument, and instead we only have to pass in the actual path to the model itself directly as the first argument. I'm just going to comment that first line and we're going to be using content.load with the generic approach. Also be sure that the path that we fill into our parentheses here is case sensitive. So be sure to use capital letters where your path or your asset has them. So loading the model isn't enough. We've loaded the actual well structure and the textures that come along with it but we need to assign this model to an actual entity so let's create another if statement and then we're going to say if input is key pressed and if key oops keys if let's say the s from spawn is being pressed let's spawn a new entity with that loaded model attached to it we can do this as many times as we want. So let's create a little method for that. Create new model. Let's generate that method. And then in that method, let's first check if that loaded model 
if that is actually loaded. So if that is not null, we can actually create a new entity. Now the loaded model needs to be stored inside a model component. So we're going to create a model component is new model component. And then we have to pass in the actual model that we've loaded in. Now let's position our model or our entity actually on a random position. So let's create a random position variable. Let's call that one vector three. And for this, we require a random object. So let's add a random value. And for now, I'm just going to create a new random object without a seed. So feel, feel free to use a seed if necessary. And then let's use random next minus three, three. And that sounds about right. Let's position it slightly in the air and do that random next also for the Z axis. There we go. Let's make sure we're making a new vector three. Now we need to create the actual entity. So we can say entity is new entity. We can, as a first parameter, we can give that random position to it. So this is automatically set right now. And then we can say entity dot add. And remember that add method is used to add new components. Finally, we mustn't forget to add this entity to our scene. So the current entity that this script is attached to, that's our entity dot scene dot entities add, and we can our, create our newly generated entity. We can add it to the scene. So just really quick to recap, loading content, we're loading that model into this loaded model variable, which just means that the model has been loaded into memory into this specific script. Nothing more. We're not displaying it. We're not attaching it just yet. It's just stored into memory. Then we're creating a new model component that has a reference to that loaded model. And then we're creating a new entity and we're adding that model component up here. We're adding that to that new entity. And we then add that entity to the scene. And that's all we need in order to get a model being displayed on the scene. So let's see if this works. Let's go to the loading content from code tutorial. And let's first, if I just move this over real quick, let's first test that S key. So we are going to spawn a new model, but loaded model hasn't been loaded yet as long as we haven't pressed the L key. So let me first press the S key. Okay, nothing happens, which is exactly what we expected. Now let's load the actual model. I've pressed L. Now let's set a breakpoint real fast in this if loaded model is not null inside the create new model method. And now let's press the S key one more time. There we go. So now we've entered into this method. Loaded model is not nil. You can see it has been loaded. It has some meshes. It has some materials, some skeletons. So that means that the actual loaded, this line has been well, we passed that line and our actual model is loaded into memory. So we can now create a new model component. We're going to generate a random position. We're going to create a new entity with that random position. And we are going to add that model component to it and then add that entity to the scene. So there we go. There is our entity. Let's just do that a couple more times just because it's fun. As you can see, this goes pretty fast. So what would happen if we would somehow unload the model that we have in memory here? I'm just going to stop the code. And now let's add another if statement. If input is key pressed keys and let's use the U from unload. 
And now let's use the content dot unload method. And here we have to pass in the model that we've already loaded. We then set loaded model to null. So this will unload the model from memory. Now what will happen do you think when we first load in the model, we then spawn a new or a couple of new entities with that loaded model, and then we're going to unload the content. Let's see what happens. So let's first load the model, pressing L. We've done that. Let's just spawn an entity a couple of times. And now let's press the U button. Let's see if something happens. There we go. Our loaded content is now no longer there. However, the entities that we've created and that have been added to the scene, those are still there. So all the references to all the meshes and materials, those are gone, but the entity is still there. So be careful when you're unloading your content that if you've added them through components to an entity and we've added those entities to the scene, then those entities are still there. So the last thing to mention about content as we've actually seen by the demo game that we've just started is if you no longer need any models that you've loaded into your entity or your component, be sure to unload them. However, also be sure that the entities that you've perhaps attached those models to, that those are still part of your scene. So don't forget to clean those up as well. That's it for this tutorial. See you around for the next tutorial where we talk about instantiating prefabs.